Hi guys! Welcome to Raising Gentlemen. I am so excited to welcome you here for our Halloween tutorial on the Mammoth Cauldron. We call it the Mammoth Cauldron because it is so big and they don't make them that big. And it was fun to make. We had a great time. We did it as a family. Me, my husband, my nightly, my warm, my ever light, my fellow. And they were so fun. It was so fun spending time with them and making this cauldron. And so I'm excited to take you through the process of doing this. And then also I go through and explain how to make skeleton fire pit with all the lights and everything. And it's another big project. I hope you guys have fun watching it. It was super fun to do and I'm excited to take you step by step. Here we go. All of the things that we use, all the materials that we use in this project, I'm going to put them in the description below so that you can look and see everything that we have and all the links will be on there if you choose to um, follow those links and buy them there. The materials that you will need for the Mammoth Cauldron are, you're going to need a large versicle. We went with the largest that we could find. We got a 95 centimeter. We pumped it up to the right size. We let our kids jump on it a little bit. Get a little bit of use out of it before we move on to the cauldron. And then we went ahead and we got everything ready. We prepped, we got our kids already, they're excited. And we got set up and then we started mixing our flour with our water. I think we used three cups of flour and one cup of water. I think it was the perfect mixture that we went with. We mixed that up and then we went over and we ripped up our papers and we put it in a paper mache, put it in the flour mixture, and then we put it on the wall. So what you're all gonna do is you're gonna grab a piece of paper and your hands are gonna get dirty. I'm careful not to get your clothes dirty. Grab a paper and put it in the paste. Why? Because this is how you do paper mache. This is where we make our witch cauldron, and then you gotta make sure it all gets all wet. Put it on like that. And I wonder if I got too much. Can you really watch out? But it's dripping on the ball. That's okay. When we were paper macheing the ball, we left the top of it clear of paper and flour because we were going to go ahead and pop it and then we we're going to cut our wrap. So we paper mached our ball and we did maybe about five layers until it was a good sturdy thickness. So you can go however many layers you want, um, you just want to make sure it's good and strong. So once we were finished with the paper mache, we took it on down and we let that dry for about I think it was about two or three days. Okay, we've gone all the way around it with the sander and we've got it pretty smooth. Now when we go with the coat of polyacrylic, do another sanding after that dries just to get it extra smooth. For the polyacrylic, what we're using is a Minwax polyacrylic water-based. We're using the clear satin, but you can go with a matte finish, which would probably give it just the same effect. Um, but you don't want to go with the glossy. So keep it either satin or matte. Good job. That was good, Born. Try your best not to get a drip. When it was all dry, we turned the paper mache ball up so the opening is now on top. And then we pop the ball and we let it completely deflate and then we pulled it out of the cauldron. From there, we were able to go ahead and cup all the way around so it was a nice, even edge.
You will need two 3.5 inch black foam noodles for the rim of the cauldron. So you'll want to cut the noodles right down the middle and then you'll want to hold it up to your cauldron and measure the correct amount of how much you'll need all the way around. And then we got our sustain with Gorilla Tape to secure it and make sure that it was very strong. Once the noodle was all added, we went and cut along the bottom and that allowed it to give it a little bit more of a lip. And then we cut off a little bit off the top to give it more of a flat rim look. So after we finished the noodles on top, we went ahead and we paper mache it again, the entire rim, several coats, just to make it really strong. You will need two foam rings that you can get at any craft store. And then we paper mache the rings as well for the handles. And the reason that we had to do that with foam handles is because they are so fragile. If you squeeze them, they break very easily or if they get dropped. And so we paper mache them so that they would be locked in there and they were strong. So after the paper mache, we went ahead and we sanded everything to get rid of all the bumps and pieces sticking up. We poly acrylic on the inside and on the outside, everywhere we did. Maybe two or three coats of that just to make it really strong and very durable. So with the fire pit, we kind of had to do it at the same time that we were doing the cauldron. So step one with the fire pit is we needed to get our wood paneling ready. We had wood wall paneling previously from another project that we were working on. So we cut a big square out of that, laid that flat on the ground, and then we used that to be our main wood piece for the fire pit. We got a whole bunch of trash bags, cut them up, and take them to the bottom of the cauldron. You will want to make sure to cover your cauldron with a barrier of some kind, because if you don't, that foam is really sticky and it will not come off your cauldron. We gathered all of our supplies and we went ahead and we sprayed the spray foam all along the bottom around the cauldron where it's going to go and that way we would know what the right size was and build it up from there so it would be sturdy and it would just hold our cauldron in place. I had that first layer to encase the lights. So then I grabbed a strand of lights and I went ahead and I put the lights all the way around sporadically and then I went over it with the other foam and I sandwiched the lights in between both of the foams but leaving gaps so that you have some lights poking out a little bit and this part you need to move quickly because if you don't your foam is going to dry After all the bones were in, I went ahead and I started adding all the pieces of wood or the little logs in the right places and just kind of looking at it, seeing where it needed it, and then keep adding the foam up around closer to where the cauldron was to build up a mound so it would keep that cauldron in there. And then we ended up using all of our foam, so we just kept going until we ran out. It ended up being perfect. Six cans was what we needed. Next, you're going to remove the cauldron from your fire pit, take off the trash bags, set that aside. You're going to spray paint the entire fire pit a flat matte black spray paint. I think we even added a little bit of red spray paint in some areas just to give it a little bit of depth and character.
be want to add the accents and the highlights. So that's when you're going to pull out the black paint and the white paint, mix the two together and get different levels of gray and that will help to add to the depths of the bones and make it look real from the wood. Then you're going to dry brush the paint onto the wood, the bones, and the foam just a little bits at a time. We did add some extra light color to the bones to help make them pop from the wood. This is after my husband put the gray paint and the white highlights on top of the black. Looks so cool. And then we started spray painting the entire cauldron. The matte black helped give the cauldron a charcoal texture, which was really nice. Next for the texture, we dug in the ground and we found some sand. We took it back and we mixed it with the polyacrylic and we got some paint brushes and we went and we dabbed it on strategically in places throughout the cauldron, making it even in others and then uneven in other areas. We're trying to give it a little bit of depth but making it look aged, authentic. After we were done with the texturizing, we went over it with black paint in some areas and white paint in others to try and give it that depth with the shadows and the highlights. So that added a lot to the cauldron, making it look more real. We need one 8.5 by 11 foam sheet, cut it to the right size. So it was just like a, a rectangle. So we just held it up to the cauldron to a place where we wanted it. a hole in the very bottom and that's the hole where the cords are going to go for the fog lights. You will need one shallow plastic tray and that is going to hold the water that will go inside of the cauldron. We just got ours at Home Depot and it happened to almost be exactly the same size as the opening with a little bit of a gap. The basin itself was about this thick. We used a whole bunch of buckets stacked on top of each other to the right height. Last for the cauldron, you want ultrasonic fogger lights, which go inside the water. Thanks for joining us guys on Raising Gentlemen.